All right, man, we're live. We're live. We got who better to follow up freaking Brent Gove than uh, AJ Mighty Man? How are you, brother? I'm awesome, man. I actually, uh, I'm, I'm here in Napa Valley, and Brent Gove just came over last night, and I uh, had dinner with my wife and I, so it was super awesome. That's awesome, man. So, um, for those who don't know that are watching or listening, um, tell everybody a little bit about what you're doing right now. I mean, obviously, uh, there's a lot of people. You've got a great following on Facebook, and, and those of you who, uh, who follow him on Facebook know that uh, Mr. Mite is traveling around the United States right now in a beautiful RV. But tell us about that. Tell you, tell us how you were able to do that. Yes. Yeah, so, um, I mean, really, it all started with with joining EXP. So, uh, you know. Fast for, or rewind a little bit. So uh, I was with Keller Williams for for four or five years and, and loved my time there. Awesome company, really enjoyed it. And, and when I saw EXP back in December of 2016, uh, I, I saw the opportunity. It was very unknown at that time, only 2,400 agents. So so took a leap of faith and, and went with it, and it's, it's turned out great. So uh, when I when I joined EXP, I had a real estate team doing about 20 million a year in sales volume, uh, which was good. However, you know, good is oftentimes the enemy of great. And, and I saw the opportunity with revenue share and stock ownership in this company. So, so I started to pursue that very part time the, the first year, but now it's turned into uh, an organization of 781 agents in just 21 months. And um, I've only personally enrolled into the company 29. So those 29 have turned into 781. It's just unbelievable. And because of that, um, we live a passive income driven lifestyle now where we're able to travel the country in our motorhome. Dude, that's freaking awesome. Well, I definitely want to get a, a little more granular. Um, first of all, uh, you you mentioned that you were with Keller Williams and, and um, a lot of you know that I was also with Keller Williams. I wish I had come over when you had came over because, you know, when you when you joined with 2400 agents, I can imagine that um, it looked a lot different than it does now, even though we're only, you know, at 15,000 agents and we have so much opportunity to grow. Talk a little bit about the decision. Like, I, AG, what really impresses me about you is the fact that you had the balls or the cojones to come over when we had only 2,400 agents. Like, what did you go through? Because Keller Williams was this booming Goliath, man, right? They have 170,000 agents and they're just trucking along, right? How did you, like, Talk about like the kind of the, the 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 mental mindset that you had to go through to, to get and, and make that decision. Yeah, yeah. For me, I mean, I mean, Keller Williams was great. I mean, I took bold five times in my office. I was kind of the poster child for bold. Whenever whenever it rolled around, you know, I helped promote it. I was on ALC for two years. If you're with KW, you know what that is. I was productivity coach for a year, so I was heavily ingrained into KW culture and enjoyed my time there and loved it. Um, you know, however, I could have, I saw myself in the future possibly going independent because, you know, I'm always investing in coaches and I'm, I'm, I'm always learning, always reading. So I'm very growth minded. However, any real estate coach I ever hired was actually outside of MAPS coaching. Nothing against MAPS coaching. However, I just got my coaching from outside companies. Um, so, I, so I knew even if I went independent or joined a different company, I was still going to have the great training, the great coaching I always had. So I wasn't losing that. Um, and, and when I first joined Keller Williams, I, I, I heard of the profit share, you know, um, it's not why I joined Keller Williams, um, but I heard profit share. I was like, man, that's so cool. And I heard of this one guy, um, who was making like $20,000 a month in profit share. I was like, man, that's gonna be part of my business plan. That seems really cool. And, um, I, you know, three, four years in, I had say 50 people in my profit share tree at, at KW and I was only making a couple hundred bucks a month. And I quickly learned that, um, through profit share for for me personally, it wasn't going to be li a life changing income. It wasn't going to be something that I should spend a lot of time on because I needed to pay my bills. So I needed to, you know, constantly be calling expired listings for sale by owners. You know, um, generating buyer leads. You know, building out a team, selling a bunch of houses. I, so I I really never put a much effort into the profit share. I think in my area maybe um, that opportunity has come and gone. So when I saw revenue share and I and the company was started by Glenn Sanford, former KW agent, got gets the models, but he's like this, you know, genius. Um, I was like, you know, this could easily outpace what Keller Williams has done because we got rid of the bricks and mortar. So that means that overhead expense is gone. That's coming back to us, the agents. 
in the form of revenue share. Um, this could be a really big thing, and and I took a leap of faith on it, and it's far exceeded my expectations. I thought that it would take me um, a year or five years to get to 500 agents in my organization, and it took 16 months. Dude, that's crazy, man. You know what you said there that really resonated with me is the fact that you were really gung ho about this profit share thing at Keller Williams. And it was it was a really good idea. Right. Especially for those who got into the company early. Right. Like we had uh, a gal that owned our region. Her name was Linda and, and uh, Jimmy McKissick. Like they owned our region. And, and I know Linda and Jim make over a million dollars a year from profit share. They do really well. But they've also been in it, you know, you know, 20 years and they got in on the front side of it. And and when you talk about opportunity at EXP, you talk about getting in on the front side of it. Isn't that where we're at right now? Aren't we on the front yeah. side of this? So there's yeah. still a ton of opportunity, man, right? Yeah, 100%. I mean, we're, we're just scratching the surface. What what's, what's crazy to me is how fast we're growing. I mean, 2,400 agents to 15,000 or so, wherever we're at now, um, somewhere around there in, in less than two years. And it's not going to be that much more difficult for us to go from 15,000 to 50,000. So um, just, you know, being inside the company and networking for a lot of the agents, it's really cool to see the people who are, um, you know, creating some some passive income, some financial freedom through the rev share. And, and we're just getting started. It's going to it's going to really change a lot of people's lives by joining our company. So that's exciting. Yep. So talk about like when. Obviously, when you heard about EXP, um, is this a decision that, you know, you had to mull over or was it something that, you know, you saw the opportunity and you were able to act pretty quickly? Yeah, I acted super quick. Uh, I saw the webinar and um, after that, I got super excited. And then I went to Google. I went to YouTube. I started typing in EXP all over. Um, I listened to a couple of podcasts where they had been talking about EXP a little bit. And you couldn't find as much as you can now about EXP. But I found some stuff on YouTube, found some stuff on some podcasts, um, watched the webinar that was sent to me like four times that weekend, showed it to my wife. We watched it in bed together the, the next night. And uh, within seven days or so, I was over at EXP. Wow. Dude, that's awesome, man. So you saw the opportunity right away, and that's why you were able to jump at 2,400 agents and now have over 780 people in your revenue share group. Man, so talk about when you, like, okay, so you you made the decision to go over, and um, how was your team structured at that time? Yeah, so we had a team of five agents. It was myself, my wife, and we had three uh, buyers agents on our team. Um, and the important thing, one of the reasons why I was able to make the decision so fast is because it wasn't for me personally, it wasn't what are we going to lose by leaving KW and going to EXP? Like we weren't going to lose really anything in my mind. It was all upside in worst case scenario. We're still going to be selling a bunch of houses. We're going to have a great team. Um, so there was only upside. There was no downside for me making the switch. Uh, but yeah, we, we were, we were um, a heavily prospected based team. Um, we did a lot of buyer leads as well. My best year ever was, I think, 86 houses is what we sold. Uh, our gross commission income was right over 600,000. So, so not a huge mega team, but 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 the income was good. You know, uh, the lifestyle was great. You know, wasn't grinding too hard. Only only working like 30 hours a week or so, um, building that team. So it was um, semi passive. You know, in terms of not working 60 hours a week. Uh, but but yeah. So that's how that's how we we're structured. What AJ? What did you do before you got into real estate? I had a painting company. So in college, I got involved with a company called Student Painters, and we basically taught college students how to run their own painting company in their hometown in the summer. So I was uh, basically recruiting college students and training them how to go out, market their painting company, do the painting estimates, and then how to go hire painters to paint for them, which was usually their high school buddies uh, now in college. Um, and we were all, you know, 18 to 20 year olds just having a lot of fun running these little painting companies and all these different little cities around Michigan. Got it. So talk about the story then about how you got, how you went from doing that into getting into real estate and then eventually building the team that you have today. Yeah. So I, I left Michigan uh, around age 22 for an opportunity um, with another company and we were kind of buying and selling precious metals. So it was, um, really unique opportunity for the time and moved to California, Orange County, lived there for about three and a half years. Uh, then my wife and I, um, we started a division of the student painters company out there. Um, and then it just didn't really work out. You know, ultimately um, it was a failure and I, I could have stayed there for, for 
another year and, and try to get it going again. But however, you know, our heart just wasn't in it. So we're like, you know, let's let's move back a little closer to home, but not back in Michigan with the with all the snow and all that. So we just kind of picked a spot on the map, North Carolina, and drove cross country and and um, started a painting company there. Um, just a you know professional painting company, no 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 nothing with students or anything, and did that for about eight months. And over the course of um, a four wheeling accident where I broke my leg and and couldn't you know, actively do as many painting estimates as I was. I picked up the millionaire real estate agent book and um, and ultimately decided to get my real estate license. Always wanted to be an investor, but I didn't know you could actually run your real estate business like a business. You know, I just saw real estate agents. So I, I was attracted to the business side of it. Um, so that's what propelled me to get into real estate back in uh, the end of 2012. So talk about like your first year in real estate. What was that like? Oh man, I, I, it was bad. I, uh, I sold six <laughs> houses. <laughs> Sold six houses, um, and and I'm a big proponent when I'm coaching people is you know you really gotta focus. You know when I when I first got into real estate, I was going to all the ignite classes and, and everything I could get my hands on, watching all these YouTube channels, and I was just dabbling in a lot of different lead generation sources. I was dabbling in open houses, I was dabbling with internet lead gen, I was dabbling with Fizbo's expired, and it wasn't until I actually just zeroed in, hired a coach around July, so about six months in, and I was still doing a little bit of the painting business. I was like, you know what, I'm an all in or all out kind of guy. I had to completely just cut off my painting company, so I shut it down. Um, there was no part time for me, so I shut that down. Hired a coach, went all into expired listings, and by the end of my first year, I had over 20 listings, and that propelled me into my second year, where I sold 36 houses um, and, and created a great six figure income in my second year. That's awesome, and that was just you, by the way, right? That was yeah. just you at that point. And I, yeah, and I did get rookie of the year selling those six houses at my office. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Well, good for you. <laughs> so they were rewarding yeah. mediocrity, I guess, right? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> well, you did know what you didn't know, man. And what's really cool about your story is um, I kind of built my business the same way in that I didn't have a big network of people where I'm from. Uh, my wife is actually from this area. And so um, I had to build my business calling expired leads as well and, um, and, and did really well at that. So it's interesting, though, that, you know, you've come this far in such a short period of time. Um, talk about like talk about like how you think you were able to get from where you were in 2012 to this guy that was selling six houses to now you've built this team that sells over 20 million bucks a year. And you've got all, all, all these things, all the different components of your life working well for you. How, how, how have you been able to do that? Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, that that iceberg that we've all seen, you know, it's like you have the iceberg and you only see the tip, but you have all the stuff underneath the water that you don't see. And that's all the, you know, the effort that you put in, the perseverance, all, all those good traits that you need to have to be successful, but people only see the tip. I mean, in high school, you know, my friends always used to kind of joke with me. I always had a business book in my hand, you know, from age 16. I read Rich Dad Poor Dad when I was 16 and I didn't grow up with a lot of money um, at all. So it's always important to me to um, to earn money because I've seen what um, problems can arise when, when you don't have a lot of money. So I always saw myself as being an entrepreneur, being an investor. So from age 16, um, I was constantly working on myself. I was reading good books, listening to great podcasts. I started listening to podcasts back in 2008 before people even knew what a podcast was um, and, and, and networking with people and, and following people, being coachable because I, I know when you're learning from others, you can get farther faster and when you're open to learning and not thinking that you always know the best way you're going to get there faster so I mean I was really working hard on myself for a good 10 years before I even ever got into real estate so yeah. it starts with working on yourself and that carries over into everything uh, then when you work on yourself you show up in the world as, as a person that attracts other good people to you so when you're you know when you have a smile on your face and you're excited and you're enthusiastic and you're positive you're naturally going to start to surround yourself with some some good quality people and that's really what's propelled my success in ESP with the revenue share team is I just got some really solid people that are on my team that's great so talk about like when you um so when you made that decision to move from KW to EXP, talk about if you can or as in, in, in as much detail as you can about the conversation that you needed to have with your broker at that point. Yeah, so it is pretty simple. You know, I had a great relationship. And, and at that time, and it's funny, I was just because Brent was asked, kind of asking me last night a little bit about how that transition was. You know, did they treat me fairly and all that kind of stuff? 
And at the time, EXP wasn't competition. Like, EXP was nothing even on the radar of any other company, whereas now, you know, other companies really see, ultimately see us as a threat, um, which is unfortunate because we're, we're all in the same industry and all working together ultimately to keep it a good industry. Um, but I just went and told my broker, um, I think it's important if you are making the switch, if you're thinking about it, if you're in the middle of it, to to make it official with EXP before you go tell your broker because they're going to try to tell you like they're going to promise you everything you know they're going to say they're going to help you more maybe better splits whatever it is so so in your heart if you know like EXP is a good choice you know fill out the independent contractor agreement read through it of course first then fill that turn that in and then just go in and say hey I made the decision to to join this company called EXP I'm super excited um, appreciate everything that you guys have done for me it's just really bittersweet you know and I, I was just transparent with that because it was bittersweet you know I loved I, I still love the people there um, and then they wished me well so it, it was a good transition how did you um, how did you bring it to the team at that point. So I just sat down after I had made the decision in my mind, I sat down with them and basically said, hey, you know, I'm super excited about this. I want you guys to be 100 percent on board with me. Um, and I just sat them down at a conference table and uh, pressed play on the webinar that I watched and and got what got their opinions on it and, and kind of shared with them how this is an opportunity to really change their lives, too. You know, it's not a selfish de decision. I think that this is the best opportunity for every real estate agent. I mean, where else can you also get stock? Great commission splits, lead generation platform like KV Core, and of course the revenue share. So um, I was sold on it, and I think my confidence uh, helped them um, in coming over initially. When you when you talk to other agents about EXP, um, who typically understands the model the most? Uh, definitely the more seasoned agents, agents who are already in the business of selling houses. Uh, not only do they understand it more, but they're more likely to join. Uh, so, because a lot of the new agents, you know, are just kind of like, man, I just need to sell my first house. You know, I just went through real estate school and all they taught about was, you know, how to, you know, really do some contracts and not get in trouble as a real estate agent ultimately. And and they're just trying to learn out, learn how they're going to do business. So I think seasoned agents, agents that maybe have even sold three houses or more um, are a good agent to join EXP. But, but really all, all agents, I mean, with over 20 hours of training live in the cloud every single week, I mean, it is great for a new agent. I think the training that we have is just as good, if not better than what, what KW offers, honestly. Yep, I would agree with that. Um, I think that it is a great opportunity uh, for new agents. In fact, I was just having this exact conversation with a new agent because what's what's great about Keller Williams is the training, but the training is only as good as the trainer. And, and so if, if your strongest trainer at your local market center is not a very strong trainer, in other words, they don't have a lot of experience or they haven't sold a lot of property, you're only going to get training as good as they can offer. Whereas at EXP, when you go into the cloud, you're getting training from top tier talent across the United States. So the impact is 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 incredible. And so, like, I, I agree with you. I think the training opportunity at EXP is infinitely better. I, I'm mm -hmm. curious so for you, though, when you talk about like, um, you know, talking to agents, which I'm sure you do. And, and I'm sure, you know, with your social media following and, and how long you've kind of been in the game now people are reaching out to you, but when you talk to agents at specific brokerages, are there any agents at any particular brokerage or brokerages that get this model more than others? Definitely, I would say Keller Williams agents, uh, just because they have profit share, uh, we have revenue share, so they already get the idea that if you're excited about your company, which if you're not excited about your company and you're not sharing it with other agents, like you shouldn't be at that company. So you should already be sharing where you work because you're excited about it. You're excited about the opportunity. And if you like people, why wouldn't you want to share a good opportunity with other people? So if, if you're not, you know, at a company that you love, you know, maybe you should be looking already. But yeah, I mean, so, so Keller Williams agents get, if I share KW, I'm going to get some profit share. So they get, if I share EXP Realty, I'm going to get some revenue share. I'm going to get some stock. Um, so, so definitely that's the, you know, that's I think why we're attracting KW agents a lot too. And because we were founded by Glenn Sanford, who was at KW, he gets the team model. You know, we support the team model. You know, if if you want to be an individual agent with EXP, great. If you want to run a team, great. You know, if you want to be an expansion team in the traditional sense, great. That model's here for you even better than it is at KW because we have one cap 
for the entire country um, of 16,000 versus having to have one cap in each market center. But, um, but yeah. Have you ever thought about one thing that I, I mean, I often think about is, is, is like traditional brokerages like Berkshire Hathaway or Cobalt Banker or Century 21. Um, and some of them have an infinite cap and uh, most of all of them, uh, from what I know, I have an infinite royalty. Um, are I'm curious, why do you think people stay at those brokerages? I think it's just being comfortable. You know, people just don't like change and um, they're afraid, you know. I, I I can't see any other reason for the most part for not at least taking a look at EXP or making the switch um, other than being afraid of change. I mean, it's just like, you know, if you take two real estate agents and you got real estate agent A, real estate agent B, and we're both selling two homes a year. You know, we're both gonna be inching along the tracks at the same pace. However, agent A, agent A over here, um, also gets stock. So they're gonna inch up farther ahead. They're gonna get revenue share. They're gonna inch either, even farther ahead. They're gonna, in many cases, at an 80-20 split, have a better split than their current broker, plus that cap, like, like we mentioned, not having that ongoing royalty forever. So they're gonna inch even farther ahead. So it's just like, there's no other company offering what ours does. So to, to be able to earn more money and, and a, a lot of it be passive, I mean, how could you not switch? Like that's why we're growing so fast. You know, people are, are waking up to the reality that they're brokers and owners, they're, they're making them rich, they're their end game. And, and now a lot of real estate agents are realizing, hey, I need to be my own end game. I can't just keep stuffing the pockets of my broker owner. Yeah, it's 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 funny that, you know, in in our area, some of the more challenging conversations are with those agents. Um, it seems to me like the KWs of the world um, and and the independent brokerages, uh, they tend to get it on a little bit higher level. I've never understood why people um, would be willing to pay a, a broker fifty thousand dollars. Uh, and not get that $50,000 worth of value. Um, be, because to me, and Dan Beer was talking about this on a thread yesterday that uh, that I had on Facebook, or maybe it was the day before. But because like, I, if you're getting $50,000 worth of value, like, I mean, if you, if you had a key hire, right? If you had a key position and you just nailed it with a key hire, uh, and that person, he or she wanted 50 grand a year, hey, no problem. I got no problem spending that, right? But if you're paying in $50,000 a year and you're not getting that back, in other words, the training's not very good, the tools, the resources are subpar, or every other brokerage offers those same tools, why in the hell would you would you stay there and continue to pay that amount of money is just beside me. But, um, you know, I think you're right. I think it all falls back to uh, just maybe fear of change and then some level of complacency. And um, but I think ultimately you're right. I mean, we're you were a very early adopter and I think we're still in the early adopter phase. And um, I think we'll continue to go through these different phases where people people will will, you know, finally hit a comfort level when they see, oh, my gosh, all these other people have gone over there and they're doing really well. Right. Like, um, do you think yeah. that, that ultimately like this model, like with Glenn's model now, do you think that this is the death of the traditional brokerage? I, I don't think it's the death by no sense. You know, if it was the death, you know, that kind of means that every agent would eventually be at EXP, which I don't think is possible. Um, but I, I full heartedly believe that EXP will be the number one real estate company in the world um, in a much shorter period of time than any other real estate company has ever surplanted anyone else as the number one company. Um, I totally see that. Um, I mean, a lot of people just are gonna are gonna be happy at their boutique brokerage, their independent brokerage, um, because they like the people. They like you know going into an office and having other other agents around them. So, I, I think there's always gonna be a niche for other brokerages, um, but I do believe we'll be the biggest, and we'll be the biggest by a very far margin. Do you think as millennials um, continue to roll into the job market, that that um, that will have an effect with the way? Um, they see realtors and real estate in that, um, you know, most of them as it, as it relates to brick and mortar are, are just fine with, with logging in and going to meetings on their computers versus if you look at people um, uh, like post gen Xers, baby boomers, right. They're maybe their comfort level maybe isn't uh, as high, not to say that it's not there um, but it's just, it's maybe an easier conversation. 
Do you think that that will have an effect as these millennials start to get their real estate license and in, in who they pick uh, to to represent them when they you know when they take their test and they get licensed? Yeah, I think so for sure. I mean, even now, you know, before I left KW, going into the office, you know, there's typically you know the same 20 people there, you know, on a regular basis, and and we had over 250 agents in our office, and if only 20 are showing up to the office on a regular basis. That's that's going to be a problem for for large offices with big expensive leases, you know, especially in, in a downturn, which we'll we'll have again. You know, there's going to be a lot of offices shutting down, and where are those agents going to go? They're going to go to a cloud-based brokerage. It only makes sense. And millennials, I mean, you know, millennials and anybody who who wouldn't want to have the freedom of working from anywhere in the world, right. you know. Um, before we went live, I just saw someone I I, I forget the name of the person comments because I looked real quick before I hopped on here, but they said. Um, they, they teach in the cloud and, and they work from like their their pontoon boat and um, and like the beach or something and I, and because they asked if I was going to be going live in my motorhome. Um, that's just so cool. I mean, that's the world we live in. You know, there's a great book um, by Daniel Pink. I think it's called Drive, and he talks about how a lot of the big corporations, not just real estate companies, they're giving their employees the autonomy because autonomy, being able to kind of have your own schedule work where you want is very important to human beings. They like that better. So um, EXP is just taking the model of autonomy and giving it to real estate agents even more. Um, and if huge companies, you know, Fortune 500 companies are having success letting their employees work from home, letting their employees make their own schedules, well, that's just a trend we're going to continue to see across all industries is, is working from home. So 100%, you're going to see physical bricks and mortar go away at a very high level over these next five to 10 years. So like what's the what's like you built this incredible revenue share group and, and obviously you're traveling around the United States, you, you states, you've created this uh, this uh, passive income life. Um, and you're, you're kind of like I mean, you're living the dream. You're living your own dream in reality. And it's like, where do you go from here, man? Yeah, that's a good question. And that's what's important. I love how you said we're living our dream. Most people like probably look at us in a motorhome and think we're like nuts. Like they're like, man, I would never want to be living inside of a motorhome for any longer than maybe two days. Um, and, and we have this saying, we, we have a YouTube channel called One Life Living. Um, if you guys want to check that out, we just started it a few weeks ago. But um, the, the, the idea is, is we only got one life to live and everybody should be looking at what is their one life that they want to live not the life that you know their, their parents told them they should be living that society's telling them they should be living like what's your dream like what is the thing that you want to be doing and go out and do that i mean it could just be volunteering every friday and saturday instead of working you know showing buyers around whatever it is for you so that's kind of our mission and our passion is to help uh, real estate agents discover that for themselves and go out and live it um, so what's next for us? We're, we're going to be traveling for a little bit and, and, and inspiring others. Our goal um, through all of this is to inspire others to live their one life by living our own one life, you know, to help others see that it is possible to do what you want to do, then give themselves permission to go out and do it. So we're just going to keep share, um, sharing the EXP message, supporting our team. Um, you know, I 100% full time. I'm just here, here to lead and support my EXP uh, revenue share team because I believe that this is life changing. You know, selling houses was great and I'm so grateful for the time that I did it. However, I changed a lot of addresses while I was selling houses, but I didn't change a lot of lives. I mean, I've been um, really only focused on building my EXP rev share team at a high level now, really for about nine months, um, January 1 of this year. And I've played a small role in changing a lot of lives, a lot of people that now have their mortgages covered, their car payments covered, that have truly created financial freedom, have bought a vacation home, a classic car, um, you know, things like that with the revenue share. So, I mean, this is truly life changing. And I, my goal has always been to help change lives and, and to help inspire. And, um, you know, I think God put me, you know, in, in this place at this time to, to help real estate agents, you know, get back control of their lives, you know, be at home with their kids on the weekends and at nights, you know, have dinner with their families instead of showing houses, you know, every night and every weekend. So, so we're just going to keep doing that. That's awesome, man. That is awesome. I, I know that a lot of people are listening to this and they're wondering like, um, so how did you do that? Like how you've got, you obviously you've, you've got this amazing lifestyle that you're living now, but a lot of people don't see the hard work that you were talking about the iceberg earlier, right? They don't see like the hard work and hustle. Um, many of them know that it was there. They just don't see it. So what, what, what did you do exactly, AJ, 
to in order to build a revenue share group of over 750 people. I, and I know you said there were 20 something in your front line. So you must have really engaged those people in in those 20 people in helping you get to that 780 or whatever that number was. Tell us about that, man. Be, be, be detailed if you can. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, so the first thing that anyone listening to this needs to do first is, is start working on themselves because, you know, in EXP, we call it agent attraction for a reason. Uh, the more you work on yourself, the more attractive you're going to be to other people. That's just the reality of it. You know, I, I know it sounds, um, you know, maybe a little, um, you know, fluffy or whatever, but start working on yourself first. Spend 30 minutes reading a book in the morning. So, so start there. And then after that, I mean, it's very simple. Like, you know, one of the objections, if you want to call it an objection that I'll get if I'm talking to one of my buddies that's with a different company about EXP is, well, I don't want to be a recruiter. It's like, and I say like, I've been here 21 months, recruited, recruited 29 people. Um, if I was actually recruiting people, I would be like the worst recruiter of all time. <laughs> like just to get like one a month. I mean, that's that's crazy, a little more than one a month. So so what you do is, you know, if, if you were to join EXP, the way you get started is naturally some people that know you in your local market, they're gonna reach out to you. When they reach out to you, you're gonna to wanna to share with them um, a webinar or a video that's available about EXP Realty. So this is the process that we go through as our on our team. It's a three-step process. You want to, when someone reaches out to you, you don't want to try to explain it all yourself. You want to just give them a tool, a tool being a video. They watch the video. If they're excited, if they're interested, if they have questions, the second step is getting them uh, onto a conversation with um, your partners at eXp. So that for me, this would be somebody that enrolled me into eXp and the person that enrolled them into eXp get them to have a, a what we call a third party conversation with somebody else at eXp because the reality is is a lot of times it's just good to hear it from somebody that they don't know you know um, I've heard a term you can't be you know profit in your own town so if you're sharing eXp with somebody a lot of times it's just really good for them to hear it from somebody else also so 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 the first step is um, share it with somebody so when you share it say very little just create a little curiosity offer hey if I sent you a short webinar about EXP Realty, would you take a look at it? So then they watch it, and then third party validation. And then after there, if they're still interested, you want to have them fill out the application at uh, join.exp Realty. And, and the reason they'd want to do that, it doesn't notify the broker or anything. It only um, lets EXP know that you're interested because the reason why that's important is because you're going to get the independent contractor agreement and you're wanting to, want to go through that whole thing as part of your next step in due diligence. Um, and that's really it. It's super simple. Um, I see the people having the most success with this are the ones that follow that process that don't try to over explain EXP because it's really a visual presentation that they got to see. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, but I mean, it's just, it's, it's just crazy. I mean, I look at it this way. I used to list about four houses a month in real estate and that was hard work. I mean, that was showing up at the, at the office. We had an office outside of KW for our team at the time. That was showing up, calling on the phone, headset, standing up, using you know scripts, uh, you know like um, the Mike Ferry method for expired prospect and that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and um, that was hard work. And there was an expense involved. You know, you had professional photography, you had a listing coordinator, you had a lot of expenses associated with that listing. So um, I just look at it now. My my new client, instead of buyers and sellers, my new clients are real estate agents. You know, these are these are the people now that I'm looking to partner with to do business with, and instead of listing four houses a month to only have to get one agent per month and now have this passive income that just keeps growing because I mean right now we're adding anywhere from 80 to 90 agents every single month my EXP team so January 1st instead of having to redo my business plan and figure out how I'm gonna repeat what I did last year and have to really start all over with all that pressure to, to perform again to sell another 80 90 houses now January 1, I know what my income is going to be for January, and I know it's just going to keep going up because of the growth of this company. It's just it's just a different mindset. It's, it's, a, it's really amazing. Man, that was well said. So what shouldn't you do? <laughs> You've talked yeah. about what you should do. What should you not do if you're an agent at eXp and you want to, you're wanting to bring people over? Yeah, so you definitely should not um, just, you know, start prospecting, texting, mass 
mass cold calling, mass emailing, mass texting, like random people. Like don't do that. Not only does it not work, um, it's annoying for people. So don't do that. The first thing you sh or, or what you shouldn't do. So um, what you shouldn't do is just don't mass anything to anybody. It's annoying um, and it's just not effective because I've no I know people who did it. Um, in the past and and it didn't work for them they're still struggling you know that's like trying to find an easy button if you get a list of realtors and send out a mass text that's trying to find an easy button and those don't exist mm -hmm. so so just the first thing you do is you start with your your list of agents that you know a list of say you know 50 to 100 agents that you've done business with in the past that you know in your local market and it's just being a good person coming from you know a service mindset that you actually want to help them and as opposed to saying man I just got to get them so I can build my revenue share I look at it like if I'm not sharing this with agents I'm not helping them I'm, I'm not serving them because I know that this can help them so come from it as opposed to how can I just serve myself how can I serve other agents and and show mm -hmm. them this opportunity and, and when you come at it like that um, it just makes the whole process a whole lot more fun and a whole lot easier um, for, for everybody on both sides of the conversation. That's awesome. So one thing I heard you loud and clear on there is it's relationships, right? It's, it's when you, when you mass anybody, anything, right? It's, you, you don't typically have relationships with those people. So it, it seems disingenuous. It, it's just, it's not real, but the folks that you've, uh Oh, did we lose him? We'll see if we can bring him back in. It, it seems to those of you who are watching, it seems disingenuous and not real. And, um, and it, that's, that's simply why it doesn't work. So if you're, if you're thinking of, if you're thinking of joining EXP and you um, are, are thinking of how you can create passive income through revenue share, um, it's not necessarily a model where you'd want to come in and start mass emailing people. Uh, AJ's coming back now. Um, or, or mass texting people, or use some of the uh, of the methods that are put in front of us uh, as real estate agents, and we know what those are. Um, and you know, traditionally, those don't work either. When you're talking about expireds or for sale by owners, uh, welcome back, brother. You What's here? Up, man? I'm here. Yeah. Uh, what well, I, I was just kind of finishing the thought there when we were talking about like mass email, mass texting people, and the reality of it is. You know, um, a lot of mar real estate marketers, they market these products to us that um, are very tempting, right? But what we learn even in real estate with uh, for sale by owners expireds, that mass crap doesn't work either usually. I mean, very rarely do you get any any good leads from doing something. It, it's usually through building influence. It's, it's through building credibility. It's through building relationships. Wouldn't you agree with that? Yeah, 100%. And, and I mean, I definitely call a lot of expired listings. Like there's no doubt that I've called a lot of people um, doing that. However, this isn't calling, you know, real estate prospects. This is what we call agent attraction. You know, we're not, we're not trying to go out and mass attract, like mass recruit agents. We're just, we're selling houses, you know, as a company, we're heavily involved in the business of selling houses. So, so do whatever you do to sell houses and share EXP when you um, have a good transaction. Um, it's kind of like one of the cool things that, that I like about this. It's like, I think, you know, the sweet spot for real estate agents is like being an individual agent, maybe having an assistant, you know, selling a couple houses a month, and then adding a couple agents a month to your EXP team. I mean, imagine if as a real estate agent, you could earn a hundred thousand dollars a year in income as a real estate agent, which isn't that difficult mm -hmm. and a hundred thousand dollars a year in passive income with EXP. Now you're earning $200,000 a year. Half of it's passive. If you want to take six months off travel Europe, you can. You know, it's just a really cool way to, to run your real estate business. Um, so that's kind of the model that that I'm helping people with. Yeah, and 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 on top, you didn't even mention the stock. And, and so, if you're selling a hundred, if you're making a hundred a hundred net to yourself, um, you're probably capping, right? So you're probably selling at least two point seven million dollars worth of real estate. So you're probably getting an additional sixteen thousand dollars back in company stock from EXP. Um, so you're, you're, you, you have all these different opportunities. You're, you're essentially getting off the transaction treadmill, right? It doesn't, it's like you said, we're going to press the refresh button in January, right? If you're, if you're a if you're an agent working at one of these traditional brokerages, uh, and you got, it's, you're starting all over, right? If you, if you, if you're at Keller Williams, you may get a small profit share check. Um, uh, like, like we did, like I got a, like, I'll just, I just got a profit share check a couple weeks ago for 336 bucks, right? And uh, my my revenue share check was ten times that, 
And so it's like, and we just started in February. It's like, so if, if people just could see, you know, that, that opportunity, because who wants to continue to sell real estate the rest of their lives? Right. I mean, it's just like, it just like, it beats you up, man. Wouldn't you agree with yeah. that? Oh yeah. A hundred percent. There's no doubt about it. And it's like, if, unless you're one of those rare superstars that right off the gate, you're selling like three homes a month, four homes a month. Like as a real estate agent, you've been there where you needed a house to close. And if that house didn't close, you couldn't pay some of your bills. Right. You couldn't pay your taxes. You couldn't pay your credit card payment. If you had a three month slump, you know, you're, you're getting a little nervous. You feel the financial pressure. You feel stressed out. And this is just a way to even out those, those highs and lows of real estate. I mean, if, if you go through a little slump and you don't have a month or two where you have a home that closes and, but you have a check for six, 10, $15,000 that's coming in through revenue share, it takes all the pressure off. It takes all the stress off. Um, I mean, and how much better can you serve your clients when, when you're not stressed out about money? You know, if, if you're worried like, oh, this has to close, this has to close. A lot of agents, the reality is they're, they're just not always going to do maybe the best thing for their client, which is unfortunate. Um, but if they have all the financial pressure taken off of them, um, then they're not going to worry if it closes or not. They're always going to make sure that they're just, you know, serving their clients at the highest level. Give me a parting shot for um, any agent or broker out there thinking about joining EXP or just doing their research. Yeah. So if, if you're just in the phase of checking EXP out and doing your research, I mean, the biggest thing that you can do is, is reach out to some of the agents that uh, you might know at EXP Realty and get their opinion on it. You know, um, I watched Brent's interview with you. It was awesome. Uh, by the way, my advice is, is the same thing that Brent says. I mean, if you're already talking to an agent at eXp, you know, get with them, but reach out to somebody else too and just say, hey, I want to chat with you about eXp. Um, I've already got someone that I'm going to uh, enroll with when I do join eXp, but I just want to get your take on it. You know, that's a great way to, to do some more due diligence. Um, and, and just don't listen to what all the naysayers say because, you know, Obviously, I'm biased about EXP and, and people who are at Keller Williams are going to be biased about Keller Williams. So get both sides of the, the story and, and make your best decision, you know, but but definitely don't be held back by fear. Um, and if you haven't dug into EXP at all, um, you know, right off the bat, you got to get your hands on um, on a webinar. So reach out to somebody you know at EXP and just be like, hey, man, I heard about this webinar. You know, can you share it with me? Because you got to see the full story and um, and it's not just five minutes of someone sharing it with you. If all you've heard is someone sharing EXP with you for five, 10 minutes over the phone or in person and you haven't actually seen a visual presentation about EXP painting the whole picture, um, you don't know what you're missing. And the worst thing that you could do is say no to something that you don't even know what it really is. You got to know what it is before you can make a decision for yourself to move forward. Right. Do your due diligence. Brother, this has been absolute money and I knew it would be. Um, how can people connect with you if they have questions about EXP? Yeah, so so Facebook's the best way to find me. Just AJ, my last name is Mida, M-I-D-A. Just private message me on Facebook. Um, and, and if you want to follow our RV journey around the U.S., uh, it's at One Life Living. Um, so just type that into YouTube. You should be able to find it. If you can't, just message me. Um, but uh, we're in Napa Valley today. We're, we're going to Sonoma later today. And then we'll be in San Francisco um, after that. Then we'll, we're going to spend about a month here in California. So a month or two. So we're, we're just loving our time here on the road. So we awesome, invite you man. to come along with us. Awesome. Yeah. Highly recommend following AJ. It's a great follow. Um, check out the video with the RV that they're traveling in right now. That thing's freaking amazing. Um, brother, I, I, uh, I, I'm excited about connecting with you in, uh, in New Orleans. And uh, thank you so much for spending a couple minutes with us here this, uh, this morning where you're at anyway. Awesome. Thanks for having me, man. All right. See ya. See you, see you, buddy. Thanks, AJ.